Hello and welcome to my Keto Kitchen. I'm Victoria. Today we're going to make a Keto French Loaf. Now I have to tell you up front that there is vital wheat gluten in this recipe. But the really cool thing that I'm loving about this recipe is that in other keto bread recipes that use vital wheat gluten, they have at least 30% of the recipe has to be vital wheat gluten or nothing's going to happen. However, in this recipe, it's only one sixth of the recipe is vital wheat gluten. And that is because my new standard keto flour already has structure to it because there's egg white protein powder and there's xanthan gum. There's already something acting as a gluten. However, when you add a small amount of gluten to that, miracles happen. That's why I'm bringing it to you today. And that's why today we are making a keto French bread. So let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is I need one cup plus two tablespoons of water at 110 degrees. Now to this, I'm going to add half of a tablespoon of active dry yeast, and then I'm going to add half of a tablespoon of table sugar. You can use honey, you can use inulin. I've said it before, the yeast are going to eat it, and that's why we let it sit here for 10 minutes. But you use whatever you like to use. So. I'm going to mix this up, I'm going to put a rag on it, and then I will be back in 10 minutes. Okay, so our yeast water has risen up. I'm going to pour this into the bowl first. Next, we need one tablespoon of oil. This is one tablespoon of avocado oil. I get it at Costco. I'm loving it. This right here is two and a half cups of my new standard keto flour and two and a half cups is 200 grams. Now added to this is half of a cup of vital wheat gluten. So I'm gonna pour this on top and then I have one quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over. I'm gonna put this attachment on and now I am going to beat this for about five minutes, okay? Let's go. I think I'm going to switch this out now for my dough hook. It's only been about 30 seconds, but I'm going to go with the dough hook now and do the remaining five minutes. Okay. Some things you need to know. There is a minimal amount of vital wheat gluten in this recipe, in this flour. So we are going to treat it as if there's no vital wheat gluten because my flour will only rise one time. It doesn't like to rise twice. So even though there's vital wheat gluten in it, we're still gonna treat it like my flour that has no vital wheat gluten because there's so little in here. Now, we do not have to rise it more than one time. This is really good. I get this at Costco. Um, I'm going to grease my hands because it's sticky. If it's not sticky, you could get a dry bread. You want a sticky bread. That's why I'm gonna grease my hands. I'm gonna do it a little bit more too. We need to shape this bread dough into the final shape, okay? So, I'm going to take it out. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to slap it around. I'm going to slightly roll it because I said French loaf, so it does kind of need to look long, longer-ish. Okay, this is gonna be a really cute little French dough bread. I'm gonna try, I don't know how long. Yeah, that's long enough. I prefer fatter pieces of bread. And you can always double and triple this recipe. That's totally fine. Many of you guys are the only one that does keto in your house, so I don't want to put out a huge recipe that would feed 10 people, so unless you ask me to put out a video that would feed 10 people. All right, so here we are. We have a mini French bread loaf. Now, I am going to score this, so let me get my knife. There we go. I'm gonna put some slices in it. Perfect. Let's do it again. Beautiful. All right, there we go. Now, 
this is going to set in my proofer. A proofer is just a separate compartment of your oven and it stays around 80 degrees. It stays really low. Most ovens will not go that low. So what I recommend is just put this in your oven off. Turn the light on to your oven and just leave it in there to proof. You don't need a proofer. I have one. I enjoy it. So I just use it. But let this rise between one and two hours. I'm aiming at two hours because I want to see what happens and how long this will rise. The last time I made this, we did one hour. It was beautiful. I did it round. This time I did it long. So probably between one and two hours, I'll let you know exactly how long I let this rise. But I want to know when it stops rising, how long that takes. So I'm going to let this proof and then I will be right back. Okay, this is what we have. We have about doubled in size. I'm going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. I'll let you know exactly how long it takes. I will be right back. Okay, I have taken this out of the oven. It baked for 18 minutes. I'm going to let it cool, then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to show you what it looks like close up. My poor bread, I tore it up trying to put it on camera, break it for you, cut it for you, put it close. So I've got um, some random pieces. Now, this is heavier than your average Italian bread loaf. Yes, it is heavier. But let's taste it. This is, let's consider this my trial run. I am practicing and working on the right bread recipe and the right amount of gluten in the recipe. So let's taste. Better than any bread I've made so far. Okay. This is this is good. We're getting somewhere. Okay. Taste hundred percent. Denseness, it's denser than your average bread. But as you can see in the clips before I destroyed it, you can see where the yeast rose, where the bread rose, yet it is still heavier than your average bread loaf. But it is soft. It is, it is soft. It's the mix between dense and soft, but risen. Mm, oh, oh. The inside, it's fantastic. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. The inside. Mm. I could have baked this for an hour and it still would not have gotten too brown. Listen, it has a crust. It has a shell to it. And it's uh, it's almost it's almost a crispiness like like you know how some glutens you get a tear like you can rip and you get a tear you get a rip and a tear from this. I'm going to continue working on recipes with bread. I love experimenting. This is practically my day to day life. You know what? I'm gonna grab one of my daughters. She loves bread. I want her opinion. Let me get her. Okay, this is my daughter, Adeline. Now, Adeline, I need you to taste this bread. First, touch it. Tell me what you think of it. It's warm and soft. It's warm and soft? Is it? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> That's hard? Okay. And inside it's really uh, soft. Inside it's soft and outside it's hard? Okay. Here, I'm gonna put some butter on it. Mm -hmm. Some more butter. And you taste it. I want you to tell me what you think about it. Mm. 
Yay, hey, come mm -hmm. here. Tell me what you think about it. It's good. What does it taste like? It tastes like normal bread and it's soft whenever you eat it. It's a soft. Bit. A little bit soft. Can you taste what? Did you eat? Did I give you the crunchy side? Tell me how it tastes with the crunchy side. Or with the, here, I'll dip it in the butter. Okay, when you have the crunchy side, and if you have the normal side, like, it tastes crunchy and um, really soft at the same time. It's really good okay. all together. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm going to take this. Oh, that's some butter? Yeah. It's good. <laughs> so there we have it, out of the mouth of babes. So she said it is soft on the inside and crunchy on the outside, which that's what I'm getting to. The inside is soft, the outside has a tear to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you make this bread, let us know. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and you have a blessed day.